Hello guys, in this video we're going to learn how to do render time subdivision in Arnold. And all the options that we're interested in are located under the Arnold tab subdivision at the object level of each node. And the tab that we're interested in is called subdivision. And all we have to do is change the type from none to catmull. And I have uh, a box here and I need to assign a shader. So I have a box with an orange shader and we have turned on subdivision and I'm going to switch to the render view and hit render. And we can see that uh, the box is now being subdivided. Now there is extra geometry in, the, in this box. So let me create a new one here. So this should do it. And now if I hit render, we should see the box uh, being subdivided once. And that's what makes it turn from uh, a cube into a sphere. And I'm going to increase the iteration to subdivide it twice. And this will make it uh, look more a sphere like and the higher the value, the more subdivision we're going to apply to the mesh. Now, this change requires Arnold to pre-subdivide the mesh. That's why I have to keep hitting the render button because that the geometry there is a new geometry that needs to be passed to the render. And we can set this to six, for example, and that will subdivide the box six times and it will make it uh, uh, look like a sphere, a perfect sphere. And uh, this is basically the basics of uh, render time subdivision. And I want to uh, do the same thing with the with the tank now. So I have the I'm going to go under the out and make sure that my tank is included. And I'm going to select the tank and turn on subdivision. And I'm going to hit render. And uh, we're, it's going to take a second for it to subdivide. And now we have uh, we have a subdivided uh, tank and the higher the value, the more it's going to subdivide and the slower it's going to be to um, uh, generate the mesh uh, before it starts rendering because Arnold needs to subdivide the mesh and uh, cache it into memory. So the higher the number of iteration and the, the more complex the geometry, the longer uh, the render is going to take before it starts the first bucket. So keep that in mind. And there is um, a handy, a very useful feature, a very useful shader. So I'm going to turn off the subdivision. And uh, there is a very useful shader that I always use to know whether I have enough geometry uh, in my mesh or not, or if I have the proper subdivision uh, um, that I need. And what I do is uh, I'm going to go to the shop level and I'm going to create a new shader and I'm going to create an Arnold shader network and call this uh, debug wireframe. And Arnold ships with a wireframe shader. So I'm going to hit tab and type in wireframe. And all we have to do is connect this guy to the surface. And now I'm going to switch back and assign the shader to the tank. And we've called it debug wireframe. And now if I hit render, we should see a render of the actual wireframe. And this is going to match 100% the current geometry that we have. And this is the topology that we currently have. Now I'm going to take a snapshot of this so we can uh, save a copy of this. And I'm going to turn on the subdivision and subdivide the tank uh, once. And it's going to take a uh, few seconds for it to do the subdivision and then it's going to start. And now this is the new this is the new mesh and this shader is very useful to tell you how much polygons you have and whether you have the um, the enough geometry to to work with. And if we compare, we can see that uh, indeed the mesh is being subdivided. And the higher the number, I'm going to snap take a snapshot of this one. The higher the number, the uh, the the more polygons we're gonna get, we're gonna have. The uh, the other option that uh, is good to know about is the UV smoothing, and this allows you to control how you want to apply the subdivision to your uh, UV coordinate. Uh, this depends. Uh, this generally have to match whatever software you use to uh, generate displacement maps and stuff like that. So for uh, 
if you have displacement map that were extracted based on a um, an a n subdivided model versus a, a if your displacement map are contains the difference between a mid res and a high res, you probably want to uh, use the same mode that you use to generate the displacement maps. And now I have the new render here, and it, and we can compare the, um, the three renders, and we can see the higher the values, the more subdivision we have. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.